Genes are at the core of our identity. They have recently been at the center of stunning advances in medical diagnosis, gene therapy, and, alt and alteration. Dr. Siddhartha Mukherjee is the author of a new book, The Gene, An Intimate History. It is published by an imprint of Simon & Schuster, a division of CBS. He writes, one humbling fact about our understanding of the human genome is how little we know. We're pleased to have him here. First of all, congratulations on this and the Pulitzer for the biography of cancer. Thank you very much. Uh, the interesting thing about it, it's both promising and scary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell us why. Well, it's promising because as we learn more about human genes, we can diagnose diseases that we didn't know how to diagnose before. Um, with things like uh, genetic interventions, we can begin to cure some diseases. Um, it's a long frontier. There's lots that we don't know, but the technology is advancing rapidly, um, and I'm excited about that. That's what makes it promising. The perils, uh, the danger in all of this is that we will start intervening on the human genome um, at a time that we know, know very much about it, and there's an, there's an international and, and, and discussion. While it's an embryo. Well, while it's an embryo, or even in embryonic stem cells, where you know we don't know all the we don't know all the uh, ways that we can potentially manipulate it. But really, the, it's the human embryo and embryonic manipulation that drives the uh, drives the concerns. No. You're right, very candidly. But is it inevitable? I don't think it's inevitable. I think scientists will and have in the past stepped up to the plate um, and created strong barricades around what kinds of things can be done, what kind of interventions can be done. Um, so I think it's not, it's not, I think it's not completely a, uh, I, I think people will draw strong barricades around it. You write very candidly about the mental illness in your own family. You talk about two uncles and you talk about a cousin. Did that have anything to do with your desire to explore this? this topic in 600 pages. <laughs> well, a lot of information in your it's book. It's a lot of information. And you know, the, 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 that was absolutely the basis for the book. The, 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 you know, that and the fact that I was treating, I still treat cancer patients. And I began to experience the amazing things that you can do with genes uh, and genetics around cancer. Uh, you know, you can diagnose. Imagine being able to uh, tell a woman about her risk of future breast cancer and being able to screen uh, mm -hmm. for that or give her a drug to prevent breast cancer in the future. This technology didn't exist 20 years ago or 30 years ago. We have all of this now. But on the other hand, we're also grappling with the fact that there's so many uncertainties. Mm -hmm. We're using the language of genes very loosely, you know. But what are the uncertainties? What, what is the real promise and what are the real perils? That's at the center of the book. What percentage of cancers have a genetic component? Well, you know, ultimately, all cancers are genetic. Cancer mm -hmm. is a genetic disease. Mm -hmm. um, and so the question you can ask is, what percentage of cancer's genes are inherited from your parents? And we don't know fully the answer yet, mm -hmm. they, because there, there are many genes that can have small effects. Right. Um, whereas sometimes, you know, there's one gene that can have a very big effect. So just to give you one example, BRCA1, we know about it. Mm -hmm. right. One gene, big effect. But on the other hand, there are many, many women with familial breast cancer, that families have known breast cancer, but we don't know what genes are involved. Mm -hmm. So there's both ends of the spectrum, even in that one disease, best breast cancer. Yeah, because BRCA1 is a single gene mutation, That's so it's right. easy to determine That's that. Right. Just That's like other exactly things right. like Huntington's disease, Tay-Sachs disease, those would be the first kinds of things you could create some sort of genetic mutation in order to change the future in your family. Let me ask you about this. You write in your book, the genome will become a manual of previvorship. What is previvorship? It's a complicated word, and it, it's sort of entering our vocabulary. Previvorship is the idea that, you know, you can look at a genome and you can begin, we're not there yet, but you can begin to ask uh, questions about what might happen in your future. So the word previvor is a kind of Orwellian word that reminds us that, you know, we're, trying to, we're going to try to predict the future from mm -hmm. your genetic makeup. Then you become a survivor of a disease you haven't yet had. Mm -hmm. It's a weird, yeah, it's a it's weird really idea weird, you know? because mm -hmm. what you, you and, and often you're living in the shadow of an illness that you haven't yet had. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's a tough it's a tough idea, and we should be very careful with that kind of idea. What are you optimistic about where we are in this in this whole study of genes and mm -hmm. cancer and mental illness? Uh, I'm, a good place? I'm optimistic as long as the wider public understands that there won't be single genes for this. There will be multiple genes with small effects and a big role of the environment in illnesses like this. Uh, there will be genetic determinants. We know that many mental illnesses have genetic components at their very core. Mm. We know this from twin studies. We know this from a lot of studies. So I think as long as we understand that the nature of the information is complicated, that's the, that's the key. Last question. Uh, you talked about the challenge to the gene pool as a triangle. 
So the triangle has, you know, we have to remember that extraordinary suffering um, is one important thing we have to evaluate. I mean, is the genetic disease cause extraordinary suffering? Number two, is there, is there a good correspondence between the gene and the disease? In other words, like BRCA1, you know, you have the gene, there is a heightened risk for the disease, but that's not going to be true for all other genes. Mm -hmm. And number two, three, probably the most important, all of this should be publicly debated and it should be open to choice. You shouldn't have a state mandate to test your genes or to do anything about your genome. Yeah. Thank we you. are just at the beginning of the legal frontier. On That's this, a big legal frontier. On the very issue of yeah. this. Dr. Sid Mukherjee, great to have you here My at the pleasure. table. Thank, Thank you, you very, Thank very you so much. much. And the gene goes on sale today.